Yes, everything you've heard about the cat house is absolutely 100% true. Every story, the debauchery, oh my god. Coming to you from the Cat House South Studios in Race City, USA, this is episode one of the Cat House Hollywood Podcast. In 1986, I was a club DJ at some of LA's biggest underground dance clubs. My then roommate, Tammy Down, worked in a clothing store on Melrose called Retail Slut. He was about to play his first show in his new band called Faster Pussycat. With my promoting skills and his popularity in the Hollywood rock scene, which was really just beginning at the time, we decided to open up a rock and roll dance club. In the movie The Metal Years, Tammy says... We opened up the club to get free drinks and to meet strippers. To be honest, that was the motivation. From 1986 to 1992, Ricky Rackman's world-famous Cat House became the most notorious rock club in Hollywood. Our house band was Guns N' Roses, and some of the biggest names in rock and roll performed live at the Cat House. But the Cat House was more than just live bands. It was a haven for sleaze and debauchery, raunch and roll. I had a strict no camera rule, so anything could and did happen at the cat house. I've never shared these stories until now. I'm Ricky Rackman, and each episode of the Cat House Hollywood podcast will bring you back to one night at the club. We'll paint the picture of that moment of rock and roll excess with an eyewitness or participant of that moment. It might be a musician that sold 5 million records or the girl that worked the coat check. It doesn't matter. At the Cat House, we were all rock stars. These episodes will not be released in chronological order. We'll get in, tell a story, and get out. For episode one, we go back to February 6th, 1990. You'll hear the tale about the only band to ever pay to play the Cat House. That year, they went from obscurity to become one of the biggest rock and roll bands of 1990. The Cat House Hollywood Podcast will return right after this. Do you love coffee? I mean, really love coffee? Do you know what specialty coffee is? It's a coffee that scores above 80 points on a 100-point scale. Specialty coffee is grown at high altitudes with care and attention from local farmers. There is a specialty coffee with a name you already know. Introducing Cat House Coffee. I'm Lea Vendetta, CEO of Cat House Coffee. Don't think this was a deal where the Cat House name was just licensed. No, no, no. Ricky and I are there every step of the way. We roast in small batches, so when you get a bag of Cat House Coffee, you know it's fresh. 100% Arabica dark roast. Cat House Coffee, your new favorite coffee. Order at cathousecoffee.com. Welcome back to Ricky Rackman's Cat House Hollywood Podcast. It's February 6th, 1990. George Bush was the president, Goodfellas was topping the box office, and a killer Clive Barker movie, Nightbreed, was just released. Ice Ice Baby became the first rap song to reach number one. Yeah, the first number one rap song was a white guy. All the cool people were watching Twin Peaks, 
Gas was about a buck fifteen a gallon. The Simpsons had just aired the first episode. When you think of some of the great classic hard rock heavy metal records, you of course think the 80s. But the fact is, in 1990, there were some awesome albums released. For instance, Megadeth, Rust in Peace, Alice in Chains, Facelift, Cinderella, Heartbreak Station, Slayer, Seasons in the Abyss, and the album I Never Stopped Playing in 1990, Lights, Camera, Revolution by Suicidal Tendencies. In 1990, Judas Priest was involved in a multi-million dollar lawsuit involving two Nevada teenagers who killed themselves and it was allegedly caused by the song Better By You, Better Than Me. The band won the case. 1990 was two years before the first website. I had been the host of MTV's Headbangers Ball for about a month. The Cat House had been open for four years. Around the LA club scene, there was a policy that the other promoters used called pay to play basically if you were a promoter and you were putting on a show you would get the opening bands to buy tickets in advance it didn't even matter what you sounded like so let's say you wanted to play with guns and roses at the roxy you were the opening band you had to buy a hundred tickets at about 20 bucks a pop that's about two thousand bucks it didn't matter how good you were if you had the money to buy the tickets in advance you'd be on that show what that did was guarantee the promoters would break even before the doors even opened. It also meant if you were a really good band but you didn't have much money, you were pretty much fucked. Cat House never used a pay-to-play policy, except for one instance. I remember reading an article that said that I ran the Cat House with a Don Corleone attitude, meaning that if you were a band and you wanted to play the club, you had to go through me. That's pretty much the case. But that guaranteed that we didn't have any shitty bands on the Cat House stage. It became almost like a feather in the cap to play the Cat House. Sort of like what the Apollo was during the Motown era. I remember one day getting a phone call in my office from Pete Angelus. Pete Angelus was a video director and a manager, having worked with David Lee Roth. And he was currently working with record label mogul and producer Rick Rubin. He told me about this new band he was working with from Atlanta and asked if I could give them a slot at the Cat House. I told him, send me a tape, and do you think we could get David Lee Roth to play a show at the club? He said, I'll see what I can do, and he sent the tape. I listened to it, and surprisingly, it was really good. It had a real 70s vibe to it, sort of reminiscent of Rod Stewart and Faces. Pete called me back, told me that he'd give me 400 bucks if I gave him a guest list, and he'd put the band on early. I said, okay. But do you think he could get me David Lee Roth? Again, Pete said, I'll see what I can do. Uh, we got a phone call from our record company in December telling us that we were going to be taking a brand new band out on the road with us. It was by the request of Rick Rubin. Patrick Mazingo is the drummer of the band Junkyard. They came from East Hollywood. They had a couple hit records on Geffen. Songs like Blues, Hands Off, Simple Man, and Hollywood that got played on MTV. Junkyard, like a lot of the bands from that Cat House era, had their roots in punk rock. Pat played in the band Decry, and their guitarist Brian Baker, who is currently in Bad Religion, played in Minor Threat. Pat recalled the night that he and Brian went to the Cat House. We get word that this band that we're going out with is playing the Cat House, and that date is actually February 6, 1990. We heard the band's name, and we all kind of looked at each other, and we're like, wait a minute, we're taking a speed metal or a death metal band out with us? Just because of the band's name. And the name of that band was the Black Crows. There was a bunch of guys walking around the crowd that, you know, looked the part of uh, probably, I would say, definitely Faces vibe. So the band takes the stage, and they kick off the set, And we kind of look at each other and we're like, holy crap, uh, this band is actually really good. And afterwards, we, you know, kind of chatted with the guys. And uh, and I was really excited because I was like, wow, we're going out on the road with this band. And every night we get to have a good band open up for us. So two weeks into the tour, they get a little bigger. Um, Three weeks into the tour, they're even bigger. By the end of the tour, well, they should have definitely been headlining because everybody was really coming to see them. Looking back on it, it was a blast, you know, seeing this band, uh, you know, really blow up in front of our faces. Cat House was there to kick it all off. 
have to go back to saying like the first time we heard the band's name, the Black Crows, we were and not hearing a single note or a single song or seeing a picture. We just figured, great, death metal band. Yeah, boy, were we wrong. I remember the night the Black Crows played the Cat House. I showed up early because my security guards had a dilemma. They didn't know how to get a 500-pound Hammond C3 organ up onto our tiny stage. Big shocker, no band had ever played the Cat House with a big vintage organ. So let's get this straight. The Black Crows pay to play the Cat House. The following week from their performance, they released their album, Shake Your Money Maker. Then they do a little tour, opening up for Junkyard. Release the single, Jealous Again. That song goes to number five, followed by Hard to Handle, which goes to number one. Just a few months after playing at the Cat House, the Black Crows became one of the biggest selling rock bands of 1990, with that album selling over five million copies. And for the record, David Lee Roth never did end up playing the Cat House, but he did hang out at Bordello, but that's for another episode of the Cat House Hollywood Podcast. Some of you might have noticed that episode one was actually released about four or five years ago. What I'm doing is I'm going to be putting out a lot of new episodes of this show, and I'm going to be bringing back some of the old ones with some updated information And one of the reasons that I took the Cat House Hollywood podcast down, for those of you that didn't know, the Cat House Hollywood podcast had two dozen episodes and I took them all down, is because I am on tour doing storytelling shows, so to speak. It's called One Foot in the Gutter. And this is the most fun of anything that I've ever done. What I do is I go to small clubs or theaters. Some of the clubs actually aren't that small. And I get up on stage and I tell crazy stories from things that happen at the Cat House to episodes of Headbangers Ball, sex, drugs, rock and roll, raunch, sleaze, debauchery. Some stories that you never heard that you're going to be surprised about. I also have videos and photos. And depending on when you're listening to this show, I might be on tour right now. I know I'm going to be gone for most of April and May. In June, I'm going to be doing it in Australia. Check it out. I'm going to be bringing the cat house to Australia for four shows to find out when I'm coming to your town, because you really got to come to these shows. It's so much fun when I get to tell you some of these stories in person. And it's not just me standing up there telling the stories. There's a part of the show that's, Oh, how do I do it? Explain this. It's not really a play, but I have part of the stage sort of decorated like my room when I was a kid and I was discovering certain records and, I can't really explain it, but read the reviews. The show's been getting great reviews, and I would really like it if you showed up at one of my shows. To find out when One Foot in the Gutter, that's the name of the show, is coming to your town, just go to cathousehollywood.com. That's cathousehollywood.com. That also is a way that you can buy Cat House t-shirts, Headbangers Ball t-shirts, you can get Cat House coffee. All of that is at cathousehollywood.com. You probably listen to other podcasts and you hear some commercials for things that shave your balls or there's one, I think it's called the Potty Squatty, which I don't know how else to put this. It's a way that makes it more pleasurable when you when you take a shit. You're not going to hear those ads on the show. Do you know why? Because they didn't ask to be on this show. If a company that makes something that helps shave your balls or a company that makes a different type of way to take a shit wants to advertise on this show. Do you think that I would let them be on the show? Well, yeah. if, if they write a check, yeah, I'll, <laughs> I'll let them be on this show. But nobody's writing me any checks. So instead, I have to sit here and tell all of you to support this show. Go to cathousehollywood.com and buy something. You know, I am on the TikTok. That's what old people say, right? I'm on the TikTok, on the Facebook, on the Instagram. Oh, my gosh. What am I doing? I'm hanging out with you on the Cat House Hollywood podcast. I want to thank you for listening, and uh, we'll be back real soon. Tell your friends and make sure that you like, follow, subscribe, or, or whatever it is to do. I don't know. I'm just having fun here, and I hope you are too. I'm Ricky Rackman. Remember to keep one foot in the gutter, one fist in the gold.